Hey everyone, Pupsker here, and today in Warframe, we're going over the Abyss of the Goth Dev Workshop, over accessibility and HUD improvements, which are also really good, okay? Really, really good. So, hi Tenno, this is one of our main developer workshops for Update 34, Abyss of the Goth. To see what other changes, right? Yeah. There's other workshops. Abyss of the Goth Dev Workshop, accessibility and HUD improvements. There's so much to cover in this developer workshop, so we'll keep this brief. No values are final, everything can be changed, okay? Anything can be changed and swapped around. So yeah, once the update's out though, the update's out. With that said, here's a glass of greedy milk and maybe a snack as there's much to go over. In this dev workshop, we will cover character highlighting, conservation, accessibility, and quality of life improvements, auto melee, buff and debuff and pause menu, weapon trait display, and new update history screen, okay? This is coming for the Abyss of Dagoth update. Character highlighting systems. The enemy you face in Warframe tend to be well themed to their tail sets. While this adds visual cohesion to the game, it means that your foes can sometimes blend into the landscape. To improve enemy and ally visibility, we're adding a new character highlighting section to our accessibility menu. With this new system, players will be able to apply a highlight on both enemies and allies with a variety of customization options. Whether you want to improve avatar visibility or certainly turn them a fun color or both, you will be able to select a multiple of hues, colors, intensity to your liking and through the various settings. So different colors, different intensity, easy peasy, right? Cool. In the screenshot above, you can see the full array of settings. Enemy highlight toggle, enemy highlight color, enemy highlight intensity, ally highlights, self highlight, ally highlight color, ally highlight intensify. All pretty self-explanatory. The toggles and then the uh, intensity and then the coloring, right? Pretty self-explanatory in what they do. If not, uh, they highlight you, the uh, enemies. They highlight you, the allies and enemy. Yep, that's and self. Sorry, words are hard. So pretty cool. If you see in this beautiful clip that's playing down here while I'm reading, interacting with the color and intensi uh, intensity option will preview the effect on your Warframe in the menu screen, giving you an idea of what it'll look like in mission. Here is a preview of gameplay with the system in action. Not bad. Few key characteristic notes for the system. Friendly enemy users, such as those seen in invasion missions, those affected by Remnant Thrall, etc, etc, will use ally highlight settings to differentiate them from your foes. Okay, okay. Character highlight settings are accessible in missions, should you make them tweaks on fly. Majority of quest cutscenes will not see character highlights in action, except in self highlights are applied. Cool. And this is the video description, if you need it, of Grendel just taking a look at his allies, right? Him, his allies, enemies, red, green, blue, allies, self, enemies, right? Yeah, pretty self-explanatory, looks good. Conservation, accessibility, and QOL improvements. It's a quality of life change, so it's like, yeah, at least you don't have to put it on. At least you don't have to if you don't like it. But if you do like it, oh, you can make everyone super colorful. So, all things considered, pretty cool. So, conservation, accessibility, and quality of life improvements. Conservation has had long story history of quality of life and accessibility changes, but we can confidently say that this is the biggest patch of improvements yet. Nice. Because there's so much to cover, we've broken it down per conservation stage. Icons on the map. Animals' names appear hovering over the trail icon on the map. Holding your tranker rifle will now show the icons on the closest trail starting point in your mini map. Only one icon will appear per animal, so it makes it easier. Each animal trail icon will now use animal silhouette instead of generic paw print and is color coded for quicker visual identification. This slipped a little earlier than planned in Echoes of Tavari. Yep. Yeah. Players can now select an icon on the advanced uh, map to spawn a special waypoint marker to the trail start point so that you can find it easier. It makes everything a little easier to like find the animals, right? So that's nice. If you want to see the little video, right? Look at that. Wow, you have all the animal points there, all the ones if you're the minimap, the closest one, tag that one, so then it'll just run over there. And then he sniffs the ground, right? So he's like, ooh, that's that's some enemy poo. Okay, that's some animal poop. And then you follow the tracks, and the tracks are more lit up. Start trail points. Okay, uh, it's easier to find. Highlight with diamond marker with track rifle equipped. Simply hold track rifle. Uh, it'll show these markers 20 meters away while even down the scope it'll reveal them from 50 meters away and they glow brighter sick location locate and tranquilize adjusted the audio visual cues so it's easier to see more or less frequently right yeah easier to see them over 
cool, cool, cool. Ally character highlights will apply a conservation target. It's extra way to distinguish them from the landscape, should you wish to use that system. Okay. Adding a flashlight paw icon that points the direction of the animal when looking down the trans tranquil. Uh, adding a flashing paw icon. So that's the flashing paw right there. I didn't point it out earlier because I didn't even notice it. That's the flashing paw, which will show you where your conservation or where the a target is close by. So that's sick. So at least then you won't have to wish looking around as hard when in Plains of Eidolon and any other map. So that's quite uh, cool. Quite cool. Words are hard. So yeah. With the successful use of Echo Lure, replying animal call already comes from direction they spawn in. We're adding new visual cues. So that should help. I'm not mad. Auto melee. Adding an auto melee button has been frequently requested topic over the years as a way to mitigate repeated button presses. Your days of spamming E are over with the new auto melee function coming with the Abyss of Dagoth. Here's how it works. With auto melee, players will be able to be trigger melee swings through the familiar repeated melee inputs, or they can simply hold the melee input button to repeatedly swing their weapon. For as long as that input is held, combos can be executed while auto meleeing with simply adding the required inputs, i.e. to slide, attack, slide, etc, etc. In short, the Warframe melee that you know isn't changing, only difference is that you can hold E so that you don't have to mash it if you enable that. I honestly might enable that, because my fingers get tired mashing E and like left click so fucking much. It was getting tiring when I was playing First Descendant with a, a semi-auto gun, because I just had to trigger so much, but hey. Goal is to not alter main way you play. Prefer the precision of individual inputs. Auto meleeing is an additional way to play the game. This mechanism is releasing as a permanent functionality of the melee system. We've designed this so that both individual input and auto melee can coexist without an issue. Yeah, it's like just hold it or click it yourself, right? So, I mean, yeah. Our goal, yeah, since auto melee is removing a lot of active elements of meleeing, we're not are working on addition to the system called perfect melee or perfect heavy attacks yes that aim to release with whispers in the walls that's what they briefly talked about during the stream but they're like oh we got more planned don't worry exclusion to auto melee do the mechanics auto melee mirroring that of thrown weapons the following weapons will not have auto melee enabled for them wolf sledge and all glaive weapons oh because you have to hold melee in order to throw them right so you gotta like hold down aim down hold yeah so it's gonna be a little hard to get that so that makes sense Glaives can't auto melee because the main point of glaives is to throw them. If you're just gonna like auto attack with the glaive, just use a better weapon, I guess, is the idea. Hmm, yeah. Oh well, this is awesome as well. Buffs and debuffs in the pause menu. The meme of Octavia players giving their squad mates enough buff indicators to look like an MMORPG screen is real and valid. We are worry not, we're not changing the buffs you get, we're simply adding the ability to see what the actual buff and debuff icon means when entering your pawns menu. Honestly, this is a great update and I'm glad they're finally doing this. This is sweet, cause half the time I don't know what buffs I have and it would be cool to check them out. I probably won't, but it's better for new players who like really want to know what's going on sometimes. Or for people to check what their own buffs are, right? So, it's pretty cool. As you can see in the screenshot above, hovering over icon will show you the effect's name, possibility, and description. Our goal is to eventually add a description for every icon, but at the same time writing, we estimate there are over 800 icons needing descriptions. Fuck. And unfortunately, the majority of them require a bit of work to get set up. We will be working on the system, releasing icon descriptions in batches whenever we can. So it's like, slowly coming. Slowly, slowly updating. Okay. Weapon trait display. <clears throat> Weapons with specific traits or passive will now display information, this information, in the upgrade arsenal screen of the respective weapon. These traits were often hidden in weapon description or otherwise required players to learn about them via outside sources. Now you can directly see any special trait a weapon has and incorporate that knowledge into your build. So if you're war like weapon, let's say for the rising vendetta it says, after 20 kills you get follow through and then guaranteed status effects on next 20 attack awesome it'll tell you that if you have i'm trying to think of what weapon a weapon where it like throws explosives on heavy attack it'll let you know stuff like that weird stuff i can't think of things off the top of my head because i'm like bad with weapon effects and you know memorizing all of that shenanigans but i feel like that is what's going on so yup New update history screen. This is both good and funnily annoying. Whether you're jumping straight into a new update or returning to the game after a break, our new update history screen is designed to contextualize and highlight the latest content. 
This screen offers a variety of new tools for us to showcase everything that is available in our major update release. I mean, yeah, this makes sense. Having all the update info here in different like tags, <laughs> different tags with different info. It sucks that they're like, here's the new items and you can buy them all instantly. It's like, okay, free to play game, slap me in the face, whatever. This is just like, hey, free stuff, buy our stuff, buy our stuff. Warframe's getting more and more like, buy our stuff, buy our stuff. And yeah, I get it. It just sucks a little bit, you know? It just sucks a little bit. So, uh, I have like a skin tag, a skin, what is that? Okay, anyways, in the screenshot above, you'll see a v uh, various section designed to contextualize, highlight, releasing the specific update, including general overview blur for the update, familiar is this is what we've done for the past updates, patch highlights, which can be interacted with to reveal a pop-up window with lengthy descriptions of new features, game modes, etc. released in the update, direct link to the update notes on our website, new item showcase to highlight new content available in the market, how to play button, that will either direct you to a tutorial, take you straight to the star chart, engage with new content, update history at the bottom of the screen allowing you to look at update screens for previous releases okay i mean like yeah it's pretty cool not mad you know i'm not angry at that makes sense where to find the screen it's just like uh buy all this stuff <laughs> the new update history screen present players first time they log into the game via new banner over new console in your orbiter okay so yeah you can go here or in the pause menu above night wave button so right here makes sense yeah, we farm drops on Twitch. Twitch is for farming drops. I could always just stream and chill on YouTube as well, of course. We have uh, many options. YouTube streaming is fun and chill, but Twitch streaming is also fun and chill. I just like streaming on Twitch because I make a lot of videos live, and I don't really want to bother streaming that on YouTube as well, because that's where the videos go kind of deal. So, yeah. Either way, that is the end of this update, everyone. Whether you took a look to review everything, thank you. What do you think about this update for accessibility and HUD improvements? Overall, I, again, like it. I mean, everything just makes sense. Highlighting characters, it's hard to see people. I already saw a, a handful of people in the comments for the dev stream overview say, like, they love this. So, that's good. I, that's great. Like, good. You can't be mad at half of these. Conservation's always been a pain, so I love this a, a bunch myself, because I do a good chunk of conservation here and there for standing. Buffs and debuffs icon, well, I don't think I'm going to use this a ton. I, it's still good, even though I don't think a ton of people use it all the time, because, like, there's just so many. Who cares half the time? Yeah. Uh, this weapon trait display is awesome, and it should have always existed. It's great they're adding it in. Mwah, love it. This update screen is great, but it's like, lol, buy, how to buy everything. It's just kind of funny, uh, all the new. It's nothing abnormal, like, this screen's fine. I'm not even that mad, it's just, like, a little free-to-play. Remember, here's how you can buy all our stuff. But, it's whatever. I'm not actually that mad. I'm just always gonna meme and point that out. And, all in all, I... Yeah, it's good, right? Auto melee is just so you don't break my friggin' finger. That's what I really like, too, so... Let me know what you think, sub, like, check out all of the social medias, we have Epic Games Creator Code Pupsker if you want to buy anything on the Epic Games Store, Fortnite, Warframe, Genshin, Honkai Star Rail, any new game that comes out that you want, it always helps support the channel, you know, puts like an extra hundred bucks in my pocket every month, so it helps me out, so thank you, I appreciate it, and I will see you next time, cheers.